This is a picture I took the other day of my neighbour's little hut at the back of his house. Don't know what he uses it for, but I thought I would paint it. I've drawn it up as you can see and masked it. And I thought I might try and do it using just two colours. That's Tundra Blue, Schmincke Super Granulating, and that's Transparent Brown Oxide from Daniel Smith. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Wetting the paper for the sky, as usual. Not all the way down. And a reasonably strong mixture of the blue, letting the wet paper dilute the colour. Using a soft mop brush and adding a bit more water the lower down we get so that the sky becomes a little lighter towards the horizon as is fairly standard loosen up the sky with the spray bottle and just letting it uh, letting the colors or the color run a little to soften the transitions. Timing is crucial doing something like this. The sky has not dried completely. This is a number four round brush, the red dot synthetics from Rosemary Company. And as you can see, if you time it right, you can let the colour run up into the sky looking like a hillside covered with pine trees Need to make sure that nothing dries in that area and then sort of implying a, a bunch of trees or a group of trees somewhat further forward of the hill just dropping in a few details which will disappear it's me picking up the bead which is settling on the roof of the hut which we do not want and then again, before that has completely dried, painting the field in front of the hill. Just go, going over it again, just implying the road which I know is there, giving the, the field around the hut a little bit more value so that it comes forward of the hill and having let that dry, painting the little stone wall which is in front of the hut, they're not very high couple of feet, three feet maybe at best and so again just a combination of the blue and the brown and then the field in front of the wall with the most saturation and value so far in the painting or pure transparent brown oxide.
so having removed the masking tape from the house just creating a few individual stones in the wall by just painting the, the shadow side these small dry stone walls t tend to be made from the same rocks and stones so the colour is fairly uniform not bothering with too much detail and mix, mixing up a strong grey for the roof again with the number 4 round brush and not aiming for a consistent colour across the roof flat areas like that they do tend to vary in colour and then just adding fairly strong tundra blue just to the bottom edge and letting that bleed upwards, upwards before the roof has dried just to give the implication that dirt settling there or possibly something growing up from the gutter construction of these huts or most buildings around here can be a combination of plaster and wood finish and what I'm doing there is just creating a bit of shadow under the uh, directly under the roof letting the paint run into the corner there and then painting the underside of the the roof on the far side again quite dark and then just strengthening the roof and implying a gutter running along the bottom edge of the roof deciding that that mostly blue colour I had there was not a clean enough blue so just mixing up um, a pure blue it's always a good idea if you're creating shade in white objects to use the same blue as the sky at least as part of the mix if not in this case just the, the pure blue and uh, a slight shadow under the roof on the front wall there I've quickly sketched in the windows, you can just about see them there I think in pencil and then the building is not very tall so the, the door goes up to the up to the roof line And a couple of the windows are boarded over for some reason, so we'll do that.
I'm just judging visually a third of that area for each individual window pane and that other window also boarded up implying window sills there and then a little bit of shadow extra shadow on the door and then down the left hand side to indicate that the door is inset a little bit even though it isn't actually in real life and the tree near it I've actually decided to move the tree closer to the hut and just a very strong mixture of the blue and the brown that's about as far as we can get with that brush do not want the top of the tree to be getting thicker so fetch the rigger number two I think Now, sincere apologies, my the um, memory card in the camera ran out and I didn't notice, so you see I've put the foliage in in the trees there and I was just showing that's done as a sort of dry brush technique with, I don't know how you would describe it, the heel of the, of the brush and just let it glance across the paper. And there's the finished one. I hope you like that. If you think this is useful, don't forget to subscribe, give me a like maybe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.